Welcome to the Elite Automation YouTube channel. I'm Jenna. This is Malachi. And today we're going to be showing you guys how to create a mere AMR mission. Uh, this is going to be kind of just a quick, brief, general uh, to kind of just get you to create your first small mission. Uh, and then if we have some time, we'll we'll try to create some more advanced missions. And, and if this is something you're trying to handle internally within your company, it's also something that we can come in and help you all implement if you decide that you don't want to do it anymore, you get too busy, whatever. It's one thing we're really focused on as a company is, is doing a lot of these AMR uh, type of applications. We deployed to like nine different facilities last year alone. Uh, and we're, we're anticipating to, to deploy even more this year and uh, also to utilize a bunch of different brands on the market. So if you're using Mir or if you're using Omron or any of the other brands on the market, you know, one of our goals is to become experts in, in these different brands uh, on the market. The first thing we're going to start off by doing is we're going to go ahead and create a couple of positions and we're going to create these positions mainly because we we know as experts in this that we're going to need the positions so you can go and create your program and then come back and do positions later but we know now we're going to need the position so we're going to go ahead and create some positions we're just going to create some generic positions like i said we're just trying to make this a a, a quicker video to kind of give people a brief general idea and how to navigate the user interface all right, so you're gonna go ahead and click the uh, plus P right there. Yep, so that's how you add a position. Go ahead and zoom in on your map a little bit more. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and zoom back out actually. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a point at each one of these four corners, right? And we're gonna have the mirror basically just go around the big circle, okay? Okay, zoom in a little bit more. Notice now you are uh, changing the orientation of the position. So where's it gonna park at? So you can go ahead and have it parked in that orientation there. Yep. Give it a name. Just call it P1. P1. Uh, hold on one second. So you also have the ability to adjust the coordinates right here. You have an X coordinate, Y coordinate, and also the orientation of the robot. Um, and then go to type right there. You also have other functionality here too. So if you need to do something besides just a regular position, here's where you'd go about doing that. And I really only point that out right now because this may be a function that you need. Uh, and it may be one of those things that's just kind of hard for you to find out where it's at in the user interface. Okay, so robot position is fine. Okay. And then you're gonna do the same thing, plus P. You always zoom in closer too. There you go. Boom. another position okay now just to let you know we do have an obstacle right here but it's fine the, the mirror should find a way, its way around the obstacle and it really don't matter we can just put yeah just another position like maybe where it's at right now maybe or close to where it's at Okay. All right. Uh, there's one other thing that with creating this uh, path that we created, there's an obstacle right here. Zoom in to right there. There's an obstacle right here. And notice it's only showing up as four different dots. So you're actually going to get a little sneak peek of something here that we did in another video. Go to setup. Maps. And then, yep, edit. You want to go over to the far right over there to edit the map. Yep. And then, so now we're coming into the map. Up here, where you have this drop down menu, you're gonna select uh, Forbidden Zone. Red one, yep, Forbidden Zone. And then, go ahead and zoom in to those, those dots. Click in right here, click on the dot itself. Okay, you gotta select your tool. Uh, that one. Boop, 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 yep. Boop, all right, cool. That's it. Now we just need to do a save. Uh, I'll check it off first and then save it. Boom. 
So now we just created a forbidden zone. Now the, the mirror knows not to go in that area. Uh, and uh, in reality, actually, that forbidden zone should probably actually be bigger as well, just to make sure that uh, we don't collide into that. Matter of fact, let's uh, can we modify that forbidden zone? Let's see if we can click into it or something. Okay, yep. Just drag them out just a little bit. Yep, a little bit more past it. There you go. And these are things too. You could do the math calculation, but based on how the mirror reacts to its environment you you may be able to change you're gonna have to change these these parameters uh when you go to the real world because the the mirror either may try to stay way too far away or it may get too close and so you can do like i said you can do the math but it's just not gonna work out 100 percent the way you kind of planned it out that's the only that's one of the big downfalls about like the autonomous system is the autonomous system I'm not gonna say it just, just does what it wants, but it's very hard to predict exactly what it's gonna do uh, without forcing an exact paths and, and a lot of other more advanced features. Okay, now we're gonna go to missions. We're gonna go to the uh, eliteautomation.com one and edit it. Okay, so, yep, so go ahead and create. Uh, so before we go too far, I want to kind of give you all a rundown of uh, where you get your different functions at. So up here at this top bar right here, you have move. And so this gives you a bunch of different options. You can do stuff like your docking. You can move to a, uh, to a position like the ones we just taught. You can move to a coordinate uh, location on the map. Uh, you can do stuff like set a footprint. We're going to need to set a footprint. So grab that set a footprint. Yep. Okay. And then... You can switch maps. So like something like this is very important uh, and they're little small details, but like like the switching of the maps would be like if we have the building that you see right now uh, on a map and maybe we wanna go over to another building, you could like go into a hallway which could be its own map and then you could go into another building which has its own map. And uh, instead of the AMR having to try to analyze one massive map, it can, it can do smaller mapped areas. Okay, we'll move back. So let's, I think we need one more move. Go ahead and grab one more move out of that. Just move. Yep. Um, and we're not doing any docking or anything with this one right here. We actually don't have the uh, dock with us at the moment. Uh, so just click battery. So charging. So this is where you can uh, give it commands to do charging. Uh, go to logic. So the logic, this is going to give you your different statements. If you've done any type of programming, you know what these pretty much are but this is where like your loop functions at which we've already added a loop function so we don't really need to add another one and then you can just do like different decision making like if uh, you can tell the thing to continue or to pause uh, and maybe give it another action later and if we go if we do another video we'll get into more of those advanced logical functions so that way you have the tools that you need to do some more advanced programming uh, create log throw error. So a lot of this is kind of like structured text condition handling in the error handling Because this has like a structured text back end So a lot of the coding is in that manner versus like if you're used to PLC and and utilizing ladder logic Go to sound and light So this this gives you the ability to play sounds and change the lighting of the AMR and th these functions can be very useful if you go into like a hazardous area that uh, based on the sound and the light, you can train your employees that the mirror is trying to do a certain thing. Uh, maybe it's passing through a hazard zone, or maybe it's you want to know like what the mirror is currently doing. Like if it's going home, maybe going home is a certain color, right? Or maybe if it's going to robot cell one or robot cell two or robot cell three, you can designate different colors for those different robot cells. And then you know where the, the mirror is going at this very moment to tend that machine and just have like a, a operator procedure sheet that kind of calls out what exactly the, the mirror is based, doing based on its color coding system. Go ahead and go into PLC. Set PLC register. Uh, so this basically kind of just gives you the ability to access registers uh, for different data manipulation. Go ahead and go to email address. Uh, you can send out emails to this thing. So if it goes down for any particular reason, you have a bunch of email functionality, IO modules. This is where you would connect to like wise modules or you could set 
uh, your outputs, like your onboard outputs. So the WISE module that I just mentioned, it's one of the tools to be able to have wireless IO. So, you know, one thing that we've done in the past is we have our Mir AMR talk to a WISE module via Wi-Fi. And then uh, there's also some setup on some other side of things as well inside the, the mirror interface. But uh, you can basically, it gives you like four digital ins and four digital outs. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You, sh you can also do over ethernet and over Wi-Fi, uh, like Modbus TCP. And I believe it has some, a few other communication protocols as well. Then you have some shelf options. Uh, if you have any of those shelves or hooks or anything like that, go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, and so this, this option right here is uh, actually super useful if you wanna put missions inside of missions. Uh, so this is what this functionality here gives you and can be very useful, especially in code like this where the user interface, the programming of it, it's user friendly, but if you're used to doing much programming, I, I don't really care for it too much. So you would definitely wanna have things segregated into a, a bunch of different pieces of code if you, was, uh, if you had like a, a linkier program. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and finish writing our program out right here. We're gonna uh, set the default footprint at the top, you drip, click right here, and then drag it, and drag it up inside there. Over here, yep. Set default footprint. And matter of fact, do this, drag it outside into the top side. Okay, so we're gonna set this kind of like a, an init. So we're gonna run the default footprint, and then we're always gonna stay in our main loop. If you're, if, if you're familiar with doing any type of robot programming, majority of the time when you do robot programming this is the way you go about doing it you you have an init program and then you have a main loop that everything else runs inside of so just go ahead and move all your moves inside that loop it really don't matter the order right now because you don't have naming or anything it would matter if you already had them named okay boom so move to and you're gonna click into that oh sorry you got to go over to the settings my bad Okay, go to see where it says position. You're gonna change that to your P1. Oop. Mm -hmm. Yep. And go ahead and go to your next one and before you move on too much. So one thing I want to call out is see how it says leadautomationusa.com. Go to that website, get an RFQ from us. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, in reality, uh, what I'm trying to point out is these are the map names. So all these different positions are underneath different maps that are saved on the, on the AMR. Okay, go ahead. And then when you go into the next one, I'm gonna explain some other things. Okay, for this one right here, so notice how you see retries. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. This is just basically saying how many times is the mirror gonna try to calculate a path before it gives up. Uh, and then distance threshold, that's gonna tell you at what tolerance uh, the robot needs to park at that position, right? So if like you're just going to like a gen general generic position out in space, that could be pretty wide open. If you're trying to go to a very particular position, like you're trying to park up against a conveyor or underneath a pallet, those type of things will need to uh, be a much more precise. And uh, another thing to keep in mind, this is done in meters. So that's 0.1 meters. Let's say validate, yep. And then do P4. All right, go ahead and save your program. All right, now let's go back to our dashboard. Okay, so this uh, first green box you see right here is actually our mission. So EliteAutomationUSA.com is the mission that we just now created. Uh, so we can select that, go ahead and select it. Okay, you can see in this bottom right corner, it added this to our queue and it's saying starting. It's also saying pending right there. So now it's just waiting for us to give it the play button to go ahead and, and move forward with this execution. All right, so here we go, we have motion.
there's an obstruction right there in that area. I wonder what it's gonna do. See it right in front of it? Mm -hmm. If I can get lost. Let's see if he can get out of this one. Oh, he got out. So you see how it just repathed right there? So that's why we're letting you see this action. There was an obvious obstruction right there in its way. And it was able to just turn, repath, re and, and go around it. Also, uh, as you can see right here, all this purple stuff is things that the vision sensors are seeing. Uh, we ran into some issues uh, in some of our applications where we had top modules and the vision system sensors were actually seeing the uh, top module and it kind of caused quite a bit of issue for us to be able to get that figured out. All right, we're going to get you a video of that one of what it just what it just went over. There we go. And so it's going to continuously just sit here and run in the same loop because we didn't have any action that called us to uh, stop this loop. So we're going to basically just continue through this same process. Uh, you know, in normal operation, you're going to have some type of inputs. Wait for the part to be uh, present. Wait for system ready. Uh, wait for door open. Hey, open door. Hey, turn conveyor on. Uh, those type of things. So there'll be a lot more functionality within the actual code that you're going to run in your, your application. Uh, but I think this gives you a good uh, idea on how to start and run a program. Uh, and it may be like all somebody who's advanced in programming really needs because after, after we just showed you everything we just showed you, everything will be easy and straightforward past that. And good. So guys, uh, thank you for viewing, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.